Proteins are an extremely diverse group of macromolecules and that's partially because they consist of 20 different amino acids. So by arranging the amino acids in some specific sequence, we basically create a particular type of shape for that protein and that shape dictates what the function of that protein is. And so by changing the arrangement of our amino acids, we can basically create a different protein with a different type of function. Now in addition to increase the functionality and the diversity of the functionality of our proteins, we can basically modify the proteins by modifying the amino acids. And there are five common ways by which our cells modify amino acids, as we'll see in just a moment. Actually, there are many more ways, but we're going to focus on these five in this lecture. So we can modify amino acids by adding acetyl groups, hydroxyl groups, carboxyl groups, sugar groups, phosphoryl groups, as well as many other different types of groups, which we're going to discuss in future lectures. So in this lecture, let's focus on these five. So let's begin with the first one. So the majority of the polypeptides and proteins inside our body are actually modified by the addition of acetyl groups. And that's because what this does is it tells our cells not to break down and degrade those polypeptides. So many proteins are acetylated at the terminal amino group to prevent degradation by our cells. So if we go to the beginning of our polypeptide, the nitrogen is basically modified by adding this acetyl group and what that does is it prevents this polypeptide from being broken down. Now another way by modifying proteins is by adding on hydroxyl groups and one common example is collagen. So collagen is by far the most abundant protein found in our body. It is found mostly in the extracellular tissue in our connective tissue such as for example bone. And what, and what collagen does is it gives our tissue its strength. So what is the structure of collagen? Well, collagen has a quaternary structure and one of the most abundant amino acids in collagen is proline. Now, what collagen does is it modifies the structure of proline by adding a hydroxyl group to produce hydroxyproline. And what that does is it increases the stability of the three-dimensional structure of collagen. So collagen, the most abundant protein in our body, contains proline amino acids that contain hydroxyl groups. These hydroxyl groups, as shown in the following diagram, basically give the collagen its stability. Now, what happens if we can't produce these hydroxyproline groups? Well, basically, a condition in humans, a disease known as scurvy, is essentially this inability of collagen to basically produce and modify its own proline molecules in the following way. So in scurvy, the body has a deficiency of vitamin C, and vitamin C is needed to basically modify and convert the proline molecules into hydroxyproline. And so because we can't modify these amino acids in this way, the structure of collagen basically is destabilized. And what that means is it decreases the strength of our tissue. Now let's move on to carboxyl groups. So once again, many different types of proteins inside the body can be modified by the addition of carboxyl groups. And one particular example is a protein, an enzyme in the blood clotting cascade we call prothrombin. So prothrombin is needed to basically stop bleeding. And if prothrombin can't stop bleeding, then what that means is we're going to get a condition known as hemorrhage. Now, what happens is, in some cases, if, for example, our glutamate amino acid in prothrombin cannot be modified by this process of carboxylation, the addition of this carboxyl group, then our prothrombin will essentially not be as active. It will not be able to carry out its function correctly, and that can lead to the condition we call hemorrhage. 
Now let's move on to addition of sugar groups. So many, many proteins inside our body are modified by adding carbohydrate components. For example, the proteins that are destined to be in a cell membrane or outside the cell, they're modified in this way. And the reason we add carbohydrate components is to basically increase the polarity, increase the hydrophilic nature of those proteins so that they can interact better with other proteins as well as with other hydrophilic molecules. So for example, we can have asparagine, the amino acid asparagine, be modified by the addition of this sugar component. And all these different hydroxyl groups basically increases the hydrophilic nature of that protein. Finally, we can also undergo the process of phosphorylation. We can add these phosphoryl groups onto our amino acids. In fact, many different types of cellular processes that take place inside our cells and inside our body use the phosphorylation as a way to turn on and off these different types of cell processes. For example, epinephrine, a hormone and a neurotransmitter can act on the serine and threonine amino acids by phosphorylating them and that can turn on or off many different types of molecules and reactions of processes that exist inside our body. For example, insulin, which is a molecule that is used to regulate the amount of glucose found inside our body, inside our blood, functions via this process. So we can turn, our, we can turn on or off insulin by using these phosphoryl groups. Now, finally, uh, we can also not only modify the amino acids, but in some cases, when we cleave peptides within the proteins within our polypeptide, that can activate or deactivate our protein. So many, many proteins inside our body are actually synthesized in their inactive form. And some examples include digestive enzymes, for example, chy uh, chymotrypsin, we have blood clotting enzymes, fibrin, we have hormones, for example, adrenocorticotropic hormone, uh, ACTH, all these different types of hormones in our body are synthesized initially in their inactive state. And to activate them, some type of enzyme, some type of catalyst basically cleaves a peptide bond. And once we cleave that bond, we produce the active form of that protein. So not only can we modify the amino acids of our proteins and thereby modify their functionality, we can also actually cleave specific peptide bonds within many different types of proteins, thereby activating those proteins. And we'll see that in much more detail when we'll focus on these different types of enzymes and these different types of cellular processes.